Alright, what's up, y'all? Give me... Give me some kind of sign that we're, we're here together right now. That's a sign. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Big Flung Balls. Big for short. We're here. Fantasy Star 4. No menu glitch. You can menu glitch this game into oblivion and finish in less than a half hour. We will not be doing that. We'll be doing a full playthrough. Quote unquote full, if you will. If you've been watching Questing for Glory for a while now, you might know that five years ago I ran this game. And our goal here tonight is to do maybe, just maybe, a little bit better. So, let's go ahead and get started here in five, four, three, two, one, go. Please welcome Alice and Chaz. They're gonna be my first two playable characters. Alice is a, a badass hunter. Chaz is a person. And they're gonna be off on their first mission. But we got some scrolling text, so what's up y'all? Thank you for joining me tonight. We are gonna be on a roller coaster ride here together, as with many RPG speedruns. You gotta be good. You gotta know what you're doing and you gotta be fast. I will do my best. But you also have to get lucky a lot. So we're gonna see how things go. There will be times I will be hanging out. There will be times I'm probably gonna ignore chat because I have to do things like count damage and whatnot. But I'll, we're gonna do our best to hang out. So basically we're we're hunters. I almost said monster hunters, but that's that's a little different, right? We're hunters. We go on tasks for payment, and our first task here is to show up at this school academy. Or maybe you know, like a research academy. And uh, they have a monster infestation problem in the basement, so we're gonna be doing that. And the principal's a little shady. You're like, hey, how do you get monsters in the basement? And he's like, shut up, just do it. I'm like, okay. That's fair, so we'll move on. And then we're gonna meet this guy. So we already get our first party edition. His name's Han. He's like a intern, I guess. And uh, he wants to go check out the problem too, but uh, he's kind of a, kind of a wuss, so he's waiting for us and he's gonna join us after we extort some money out of them, which you don't actually get, but I guess it's it's just a nice running joke, I guess. But yeah, so if you don't know anything about this game, this is Fantasy Star 4. As you can imagine, it's the fourth game in the Fantasy Star series, three of which are on Sega Genesis, uh, including this one, and the first of which was on the Master System. Or has the wonderful distinction of being the last of the series as far as like this, this specific series. It's not the last game with the fantasy star in the title. Uh, and it's pretty late in the life cycle, so um, it's a beef, big beefy game. Uh, yeah. And so we will enjoy all of its power and glory we're gonna run from this boss. <laughs> nice. So what happens there is usually you, you kind of just have to do it. It's whatever. Um, but you can, by chance, land a paralyze on the boss. And if the boss stays paralyzed, because it can wear off same round, the boss stays paralyzed, you can actually run away. Otherwise, normally you would have no chance to do so. So 
So I, I hesitate to call that tech because it's it's luck. Like I, it has, I have nothing to do with it. It's just the paralyzed lands or it doesn't, and then the paralyzed lasts or it doesn't. And I just got lucky. It might be the last time I get lucky tonight. Hard to say. But okay, that's that's the end of our first dungeon. So you'll you'll see with this game, along with a lot of other games, is uh, you know like obviously I'm gonna need levels and I'm gonna need gear and stuff like that. But um, in the beginning, you just don't get a whole lot and you don't kill very fast either. So it, there's just really no reason to waste time fighting battles for now. Uh, but that will change in the future for sure. Yeah, this game has some wild enemies in general, and then the enemy names are pretty great. <laughs> For sure. But anyway, so you gotta you kinda get to the bottom of this fishy business and you learn about um, the first major villain of this game, Zio. I know someone said earlier they want to stick around until whatever song is playing during the transition actually plays. So that'll be in a little less than an hour. Um, it'll be right around the high 50s mark. And Zio will be, I guess, technically the second time we hear that song, but the first time we'll hear it a lot. He's this like crazy magician. He's running rampant, doing his magician thing. So we're, we're off to figure some stuff out. In the meantime, we're gonna go check on our dear old professor. And we notice everyone in the village here is stoned, petrified, excuse me. Wouldn't want anyone to misunderstand my language here. You mean low 50s, excuse me. We're gonna sub three tonight, boys and girls, and non-binaries. And yes, so it turns out our, our boss here is petrified as well. So the next thing is like, oh, well, I... Thankfully, Alice has heard of this potion that cures people of petrification. So we're gonna go find that now. Basically, we're on one large fetch quest right now. We fetched some monster killing, now we're gonna fetch some ash, ash line or whatever it's called. And yeah. So yeah, um, first things first about this game, it's the last in a 3.2 game series, so it ties the stories together very, very nicely. If this is the first time you're seeing any of them, then it's not that the lore is not understandable, it just kind of loses some of its punch. Uh, nice ambush. But story's good, it wraps things up nicely. And, um... Got a great soundtrack. It's got some cool features, like, um... Like this, what I would assume is a precursor to cutscenes. Um, so you get these nice kind of comic panels that add to the text dialogue that's happening. That's super cool as well. You have these things, I'm about to make the first of many macros, where you set the exact order of your party and the exact abilities you want them to do, which is really, really cool. Um, and yeah, menu. Nice. But a few things there. So we set our first macro, which is for this new guy, Rune, who just joined our party to use technique called Gra. You'll, you'll see it in action shortly. Um, and he's set to go first. So turn order in this game, to put it lightly, it's quite variable. <laughs> so um, macros are nice because you can guarantee a specific turn order. From there, um, I took off some people's gear. We're going to be selling some stuff. And, uh, and I set my party order. 
it was not a huge deal that I do that, but um, this game is similar to others where your party slot order does matter. Um, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head because I'm lazy, but the more in front you are, the more likely you are to get targeted. So right now, Rune is like our, our, our big boy here. As you can see, he's very, very strong right now for this portion of the game. So he's just going to be doing all the work for us. And so you, you heard me mention before that it's just kind of silly to fight battles because it just they don't give you a whole lot and um, you're not very fast at killing. But Rune, Rune changes all that. As you can see, pretty much no matter what I'm going to fight against, he's just going to one shot. And so you'll, you'll take the time to just fight stuff as they come along. In a real PB attempt, um, you would actually want a very specific number of encounters. And even then, you kind of just take what comes but um, in this situation, since I want to be able to add as much marathon safety as we can, uh, I am actually going to stick around a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to grab some extra money here. And then I'm also going to make sure that I fight um, an extra amount of battles. Just, again, both for money, but also for a tad bit extra experience. Not a lot. Not super meaningful. But just making sure. Yes. <laughs> I would like to make sure everyone knows marathon safety is in like quotes. Because there's really in this game only so much you can do. But I will say that practice so far all have been underestimate, which means we're in for a good time tonight. As I slowly lose my mind from all kinds of terrible things happening. That's probably how that's gonna go. Yeah, so like, I would have left this cave ages ago, under normal circumstances, but again... We'll, we'll stick around for a little bit. Just 10 extra levels, man. Not bad. Nice. Alright, it's time for the dog song. Excuse me while I shop. First we're gonna sell dang near everything that we have. Except for that wood cane there, which actually you can use in battle as a free heal, so that's going to be very important for us. Not only that though, but it will be involved in some uh, inventory manipulation as well. We're buying a little bit of armor, and then a smattering of items here. This is Grandfather Doran. So if you get him to talk about Alice's measurements, you can progress the story. As you know, Japan. But yeah, basically we bought some defensive items, mostly for Alice. Uh, she's gonna be kind of our main tank for a little bit. And then um, we bought some items. So you have things called escape pipes, or escapipes, they teleport you out of dungeons. You have telepipes, which teleport you to towns you've been to. So if you pay enough attention, you'll see, you will have seen on two different occasions, I entered a town and then just immediately left it. That was to set a um, tele uh, teleport thing. And then just a couple of simple heal items. You don't even need to get them, to be honest, but everything else you definitely have to have. So with a little bit of the extra money that I farmed on purpose, Excuse me one second. What was I saying? With a little bit of the extra money that I grind on purpose there, we bought just a little bit of extra defensive stuff we normally wouldn't have had the money for. Not only that, but I'm uh, gonna grab an item in this dungeon that I normally would skip in a PB attempt as well. Again, just for extra safety. Um, one of the next dungeon we're gonna be in is uh, 
a well-known uh, reset point. So we're gonna try to avoid that as best as possible. Um, from there, I made my second macro of the game. Goodbye, Chaz. So the other nice thing about macros, again, is turn order. And that's, that's important for really two different kinds of situations. Number one, for the kind of macro I made, where um, anyone familiar with Chrono Trigger know, might be familiar with like combo attacks. This game actually has combo attacks as well. Um, and not only do you have to know which attacks need to be used, um, they also have to happen in the correct order. And which, like I said, turn order is quite variable. So your party may not go in the right order, an enemy might go in between your party members. And so with a macro, you can make sure everybody goes in the same order. And one thing, another thing you can do as well is you can also kind of typically um, set your slowest person to go first. That way um, you can kind of ensure all the enemies go and then, because they're usually going to be faster than some of your party members anyway. And then you can use your combo attack no problem. Other times, um, setting the correct turn order is important because you might want to have revive and then heal. But um, that might go in the wrong order if you don't macro it. So it's just it's just one of those things. From there, uh, macros are also super useful because if you're going to be doing the same things multiple turns, instead of manually inputting every command for every single party member, you just use the same macro over and over and over again. So um, routing in this game is really sits around two or three pillars. I haven't really thought that far ahead yet. And one of them is definitely macro usage, which macros you should spend the time to make to save time back later. And which macros are just like really, really useful. Um, which ones might kill certain enemy packs the fastest, for example, are gonna be worthwhile. All right, not bad. So anyway, getting back to the story here, we unpetrified everybody, and monsters are still coming out. And since we unpetrified everybody, we can actually explore this place that the statue of our professor was actually in the way of. So we're gonna go ahead and head that way now. And we're gonna very much head back to not fighting anything, because if you haven't noticed, we no longer have Rune. And Rune was our, our beefy boy. We don't have him anymore. We're back to kind of just sucking. So we're gonna run from everything. And as it turns out, this next dungeon that we're in, which has one of the best songs in, in, in a completely stacked soundtrack, um, we will not hear it again. The enemies in here are quite tough for my level and my gear, or lack thereof. Uh, so it is quite easy to die in here. This is another kind of heavy reset point in normal speedrun attempts. Nice surprise, take that. Now the reason why I spent some extra time grinding is not that I got extra levels. I actually didn't get any extra levels. What I got is money so that I could be able to tank more hits. But that being said, I could definitely still die in here. So we're hoping that doesn't happen. Um, it is unfortunate that every encounter resets the track, but the good news is, is we're going to get a cutscene soon and you will hear a full loop of the song. So. Sit back and enjoy. You know, when we when we actually get there. Right now you should be on the edge of your seat. Because I might die. But after that, you can go back to the, the back of your seat. And then you can chill and listen to the music. Alright, so we, we had to have a failed run somewhere down the line. So you're gonna see a lot of people drop like flies here. But uh, thankfully that was not too bad. It might seem a little silly to heal just 8 hit points, but I'm gonna want as much HP as I can get just in case something like that happens again. Looks like I'm in the clear, so we're, we're good. No deaths. So far, so good. And so it turns out, um, if you don't know anything about this game, it has an incredibly heavy sci-fi um, setting. And so it's it's not really the same as, let's say, like your Final Fantasies, where there's some sort of ancient civilization from the way past. Like, technology is very much a, a part of this game setting. And kind of the, 
much quicker plot dump here, especially with the past games linking with this game, is that essentially advanced computers run the different planets um, in this uh, solar system. And one of the big thing that big things that's happening right now is like the climate and weather and, and everything is going out of whack and all these monsters are showing up. And um, in order to try to find out what's happening, we end up here and we meet this, this supercomputer named Seed and he kind of gives us an info dump on what's happening. He gives us a little bit more information on Zeo, the evil magician, and how Zeo has kidnapped an android named Demi and she's the only one who can fix the systems that are going out of whack right now. Um, and you have to go rescue her. Uh, Seed then gives you a new party member named Rika, who's basically like a monster girl. Um, who is very reminiscent of a character from Fantasy Star 2. There's a lot of callbacks to Fantasy Stars 1 and 2 in this game, and that's why this game, a big part of why this game ties everything together very neatly. Um, and yeah, so now we, we have a full party for the first time, which is at five people. Let's go. Now, now we're in, if we're thinking about splits, in about a roughly 13, 14 minute segment here, um, where we're gonna technically do a bunch of side stuff. Uh, obviously it's a speed run. You, you don't wanna do side stuff for the sake of doing side stuff, but what we need are items, money, and experience. And so there's a few different ways we're gonna achieve that. And the first thing we're gonna do is enter this optional dungeon right here. What I'm doing is setting another macro for battles in here. And then we're gonna head in the wreckage. Um, if you were to actually do this dungeon to completion, uh, you would actually do a cutscene, uh, which would reference Fantasy Star 3. Um, Fantasy Stars 1, 2, and 4 form one coherent story. One really good one, I might add. And Fantasy Star 3 is kind of like, well, we made this game and it has Fantasy Star in the name, so we should probably not pretend it doesn't exist. But um, we're gonna make only the, the loosest of references to it because it kind of is its own thing. Um, and that's not, I, I love Fantasy Star 3, I'm not knocking it at all, but uh, it definitely doesn't fit the story, so that's kind of how they're making that work. So there's basically just a lot of cool gear in here, um, but we're also gonna gain a little bit of levels as well. As you can see, the battles are not too bad. I take a lot of damage, but we're able to kill pretty well, so. Is Chaz on Fantasy Star 3? Thankfully not. Thankfully Chaz is relegated to only one game. So here's combo attack, boom. Pretty cool, right? Right. Uh, with that battle, I probably already have everything that I need. Yeah, I do. Um, I might regret this, but we're gonna do it. I kind of regret it. It is what it is, it's not a big deal. Do that, that, and that. Okay. You know, it's a marathon setting. There's really nothing wrong with a little bit of extra money and experience, right? Let's go ahead and get out of here. That's right, yeah, I forgot to mention. So I'll go ahead and take time out of my speed run. Let's check the let's check the menu. Anyone who's dead is actually just dying. And anyone who's dying is actually just floating around and not walking in the animation. So that's pretty funny too. There's a lot of a lot of neat little touches in this game that I I I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, one through three are definitely very old school games. This that this game definitely has some old school tendencies with some new school newer school thinking. 
It's the only one that's aged decently. The other three are very rough to play, although you have the Sega Ages, Ages version of one, which definitely makes it way more tolerable. But two and three is definitely rough. I have a lot of love for them, but I don't think I could actually sit through and play them again. Can't believe 50 Cent influenced this game. Little known fact. So anyway, we're actually picking up a side quest. This is like the Hunter's Guild, it's technically our employer. And they offer different side quests, and again, side quests sound slow, but we're, we're gonna make use of this side quest to fight uh, a pretty tough monster. In order to kind of rapidly gain experience, because that's where, that's where the speed and speedrunning comes in. Um, we won't be doing that quite yet. We're gonna head to the next town first, because we have to go there anyway. And then, secondly, um, we're gonna actually do a little bit of grinding in this cave, because um, even though the encounters themselves are kind of whatever, um, eventually you'll come to see that we're gonna fight some slugs. Not those, those are spears. But um, we're gonna fight some slugs, and if you actually leave two slugs, like we'll try to do right here, um, if there's only two slugs and one of them takes their turn, they're gonna merge into a super slug. And these super slugs give really, really good experience. So that's kind of how we're gonna kind of pump ourselves up, is to fight a few of these. Now, it might seem a little silly to take the time to level up. Okay, well, that's not quite how I wanted that to go, but it's not a big deal. Um, I did want to kill off two people before that happened, but that, that was that was definitely a risk I took, and it just kind of is what it is. I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. Worst come to worst, I just fight one more than I would have planned, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that, in all honesty, so... Yes, these are the metal slimes, indeed. That. Oh, why did I heal Alice? I forgot I already... I forgot I already killed one. <laughs> I just kind of went on autopilot there, because, uh... I saw five people alive, so it just kind of registered, oh, we're on our first slug, but we're very not on our first slug, let me tell you. So we're, we're waiting out um, people to get killed off. This game works like many other RPGs, where every encounter, every enemy, whatever, gives a set amount of experience, but that set amount of experience is then split. And specifically, it is split between um, people who are still alive. And so the more people I kill off here... Uh-oh. the more experience the people who are alive are going to get. So I bet this played that a bit. But it's all right. Since we're at the end, we may as well leave and save. I will be fighting one more. So the big thing is like, um, probably shouldn't fight this. So let's give it a shot. Okay, that's fine. It'll be a little slow going, but uh, it's not a big deal. It's actually kind of better that way, because then I could heal. So if you're on a PB attempt, basically you would want three encounters on your walkthrough and you would want them to all go very fast and without you dying and without you going slow. But right now it's just important that I was just able to successfully do them. Uh, let's see here. And then we're just gonna make some macros again. And what we're gonna do now is head to the Sandworm boss. That's the quest that I picked up. And this is quite literally 
a legit boss, even though the song will change. And so following kind of the same logic as before, you're gonna kind of see how we're gonna power up here. And uh, unfortunately, this is gonna require me to concentrate some, so I'm probably not gonna be saying too much. I might comment on the fight, but other than that, Nice chat, thank you. Thank you for your contributions. That's fine. So this might look like maybe things are going poorly, but rest assured, everything is going the way it needs to so, so far. Okay. So, and there you have it. One person just gained a billion levels. And, oh. I didn't even know he could go in there. <laughs> Epic feed. Okay, let's change the order. All right, so just as a reminder, the slot you're in determines how likely you are to get hit. So my strongest person is now in front. That's important. I don't want anyone to die if I can help it. Um, we can talk a little bit about routing in this game. So as I mentioned before, and uh, things are going to get a little busy, so I'll probably have to pause mid-conversation, but um, as I mentioned before, part of the routing is figuring out good macros. Um, oops. Good macros mean you're going to use their effective and what, they're need to, what they need to do. Are they safe? Um, are they a lot of damage? Um, and not only that, are you going to use them a lot? Ultimately, are you, are you gonna use them more than one or two times is really what it comes down to. Um, so that's one component of the routing. And then the next component of the routing is experience routing, especially in roughly the first hour of the game. There are actually a, a few different routes that people use. Everything tends to equalize by about halfway through the run. But um, in, in roughly the first hour, a little over an hour, um, things can differ wildly. And so, as I mentioned before, experience is split amongst those who are living. The other component that's added to that is that if a party member joins you and then leaves but will return, they will also earn ex the exact same amount of experience. And so ultimately with the Sandworm fight that goes like that, where Rika is the only one kept alive, um, everyone else gains nothing in the party, but Rika ga gained a bunch of experience and also very importantly, Rune gained a bunch of experience even though he's not in my party. He will come back, spoilers. Um, and so he gained a bunch as well. And that's the big kicker. Um, not that just Rika gets a bunch of XP, because technically that's not fast on its own. It's that Rune got a bunch of XP as well. The flip side is you could also kill Sandworm with Chaz alive as well and split the XP. Rika will get less, Rune will get less. Chaz will get more and he'll become more useful. 
And it's just, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off that we'll actually revisit a little bit later. But in the meantime, I'm gonna hope Alice doesn't die here. Okay, only Rico is hit. Oh, we're, we're not actually out yet. Goodbye, Grizz. Pretty rare that that happens, but at least um, no one important died. Okay, let's get this mini going. Laser sword, armor off. And uh, let's see, laser claw, armor on. I also didn't reorder everybody like I was supposed to. Okay. And then this is Juza, so I kind of, I'll catch up, I'll catch us up on lore eventually. Let's, let's, let's do this fight first, huh? Juza does a lot of AoE damage, and remember, my party has accomplished nothing except for Rika, so once again, you're gonna see a lot of people drop like flies, which is, which is fine. While they're still alive, we may as well use them to pump out some damage, but uh, otherwise... It's whatever. Okay, that's fine. Oh, actually, uh... Kill you again. And so we're gonna follow the same plan here. Eventually everyone's gonna die except for Rika, and Rika will get the experience again. Now she's pretty beefy now, so... Um, she's only gonna gain one level after this battle is over, but still. Nice. Boys are exactly what we want to see because of the ceramic armor she has. She takes less fire damage. Let's definitely heal that. And she's equipped to heal herself as well. So you're kind of already seeing the power of Rika. She does really good damage. She's got good HP, not just because she's higher level than everybody else. Um, she can heal. She has buffs. It, she's just all around a really, really great character. That's why it's important that regardless of the routing that you choose, um, she's always a part of it. Okay, ceramic shield. Take these people's gear off for, I don't know, no real reason. You know, there is a little bit of walking I still have to do. I could still get ambushed, so we will go ahead or fail to run, so it's important to heal. Just in case. In fact, I'm just gonna play it ultra safe. I don't trust this game anymore, or ever. Now we meet Demi. She's all tied up. She's a robot. Not sure why she can't get out of it, but you know, it's fine. So yeah, big thing was, remember that supercomputer told us to rescue her. We know she's in Zeo's Fortress. Before we go to Zeo's Fortress, we did that side stuff to pump ourselves up a little bit. And by pump ourselves up, I mean just Rika. Um, again, Rika gets all that XP, but technically so does Rune. So he'll be stronger when he rejoins than he normally might be. Uh, while I, whereas everybody else is kind of their weak selves. Um, and yeah, that's fine. They'll, they'll be all right. It's not really a big deal. But that person waiting for the song, this doesn't count. We're gonna enter what's uh, technically a scripted battle. So we're gonna fight Zeo. Um, if I were to attack him, um, they would either do one damage or miss. Um, and then it, you, you get to see him summon his god, which if you're familiar with the game, the game series, you recognize who he summons, which is Dark Force. And then Dark Force takes a shot at Chaz that Alice intervenes in. And so um, our next part of the game is gonna be without her. That's why I took off her gear. And Han as well. Han's gonna stick around and take care of her. So I took off their gear because they won't be needing it anymore.
Find that phoenix down. Yeah. And so they, they briefly talk about it. She was hit, and they all actually will reference it quite a bit throughout the game. She was hit with something called the Black Wave. Um, let me menu here. So what am I doing? Taking her armor off, putting his armor on, taking her armor off, and then getting out of here. So we lose Alice and Han, but we've gained Demi. And since she's a machine, she knows all about the machine stuff in this world, and she uncovers for us the machine center, by which we can get our first vehicle. Um, and this will let us traverse to where we are pretty sure Rune is, because clearly he's the only magical guy strong enough for this kind of thing. Um, I do actually, unlike in maybe other RPGs where you know, a character, a major character dies, and it's like, why don't you just use this? It's like, they kind of briefly mention how, like, the Black Wave basically is preventing... It's kind of like, it, it's almost kind of sentient, and it's just kind of preventing any sort of healing magic from working. Um, so she's just kind of sick. Forever. And ever. Um, and so, like I said, Room's the only one who can help us out. He's at some place that's um, past some quick sand, quick sand. So we're gonna need a Land Rover to get through. Um, this game has vehicles. This game, um, I somehow haven't gotten into one yet, but it actually has vehicle battles as well um, that I will not be messing with because unfortunately the vehicle battles in this game are incredibly simplistic and you. You either kill them quickly, or they murder you very quickly, and even if you win, you get basically nothing out of it. So, no real point. We just move on. And so, um, we've, we not only took the gear off of certain party members, but we've been accumulating gear as well. So now we'll be going ahead and selling all the stuff, and then we'll be dumping most of our money. I'm gonna keep that leather shield for the same reason I have that wood cane, um, explicitly for inventory manipulation. Okay. And then we're gonna buy two shields. The one thing people don't always know, obviously shields are defensive items, and you can actually do wield shields and just be uber defensive. Uh, so that's nice. And then we're gonna get on out of here. The side gear is particularly nice because it explicitly increases the stat in this game called Mental. Um, Mental is basically the stat that um, either your healing or your damage, or really just quote unquote magic is based on. The higher your mental stat, the more healing you're gonna do, the more damage your spells are gonna do. Uh, but even little things too, like uh, the Saner spell is an agility increasing spell, which makes me more likely to go first um, before a boss does. Um, and even then, a higher mental stat increases um, gives that incre agility boost, increases that agility boost. Well, that's nice. You got little things like that going on. So even though, um, excuse me, oops, even though this gear is pretty early on, we actually use a lot of it for the entirety of the game, just because having that higher mental stat is huge. But all right, we're, we're kind of back in just run mode. Um, even though I have room now, number one, nothing's gonna die that fast anymore. Um, but number two is like, we, we care about resources now. Goodbye, Grizz. Grizz is not a resource we care about, but generally we care about resources now. And so, um, I really don't want to wait, waste any of them because we're going to care about boss, being able to do everything we need to against bosses more than anything else. Um, yeah. 
And obviously, like, every battle we fight is technically lost time. So, um, that, that attitude is going to change not too far from now. But for now, we'll be running from everything. Um, yeah. This is maybe also a good time to talk about just, just general, more, more, more about general experience routing. You'll also see just one of the straightforward, simple things that are almost always going to happen, if not literally always, is that any party member that's not one of the major party members that's going to be with you the entire game, um, we're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to give them experience if we can help it. So, um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so. This, this item is actually in the first game as well. It's the Psycho Wand. It's basically just this wonderful magic item that negates like plot barriers, basically. So we're we're about to get it so that we can use it against Zio. Of course, Zio has one of his cronies here. Um, and uh, we gotta fight him right quick. I didn't fight a battle like I normally do, but that's not a big deal. You'll see this combination of buffs a lot. Uh, barrier and D band. Barrier mitigates magic damage, and D band mitigates um, physical. Again, based on their stats, at least for Rika. For Demi and other androids, it's a little different, but it's fine. Uh... This is kind of a, a precursor to how the next major boss fight is going to go as well. Um, because Rune and Rika are the ones that got the massive amounts of experience from Sandworm, they tend to, and for other reasons as well, in fairness, um, they tend to be the ones early on that not only can do damage, but more specifically can actually tank damage. Do you want Chris to okay. I didn't even need to finish the sentence. Um Yeah, I guess it just kinda is what it is. Ideally Chaz survives this fight, but he is kinda he's a bit of a weakling right now, so even defending, um, he can still die. You know what, I'm literally gonna take a turn to heal him. Was it worth it? I don't know, but we're doing it. Uh, he should be almost dead, so I'm not gonna bother dealing that. Cool. Perfect. Now we have it. Yeah, there, um, this is probably a good time to talk about variants in this game. Every, you know, we all know there's always ranges, um, to, that are a product of formulas that are used to calculate the different mechanics of every RPG. Um, but the way damage is calculated and the way turn order based on agility is calculated, um, is, the, the range is incredibly huge, and then if you add criticals on top of that, it just makes the damage range even crazier. Um, and so even defending, Chaz gets crit hard enough, he can actually just die, and he'll lose out on some experience. It's not the end of the world, but thankfully, I'm, I'm glad it didn't happen, let's just say that. But yeah, uh, you know, a lot of RPG folks are like, you know what, like, that Aeris death, like, that's, that's their stuff, right? Like, no, I've never felt emotion until the end of disc one, but let me tell you that this game, this game did it first. I mean, I guess technically 50 Cent did it first, and then after 50 Cent, this game did it. But, you know, whatever, it's fine. We don't, we don't need to be too, too nitpicky about it, you know? 
But yeah, Alice is dead. She's not dying. She's straight dead now. Goodbye. Never see her again. And in her place, Chaz. Does that feel right to you? Buy another size shield. It's time for Rika. And it's macro time. Oops. Alright, so spoilers. The next boss fight's gonna be the exact same, essentially. Um, where did I go? This is not the right place. <laughs> nice one. Because again, Rika and Rune are gonna be, based on their equipment, pretty strong against magic attacks, and they do good damage. Chaz will still do pretty solid damage, but there's really no way to keep him alive. Um, and there's definitely no way Demi and Grizz are surviving either, so this is gonna be the Rune and Rika show for a little bit longer. If that person's still here who wanted to hear that song in context, um, that song will be coming at the end of this dungeon. Same deal here. Uh, when able, we're gonna run away from everything. There really is no need to fight stuff. This um, this strategy is gonna change though quite soon. We will be instead of fighting nothing, we'll be fighting basically everything. Not quite yet, but uh, pretty soon. This is a pretty bad walk so far. In a marathon, obviously irrelevant, but. In a PB attempt, like, you would already be losing time versus your PB split with what's happened already. Sadly. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of games that did, that killed a major character and made you all sad and stuff before this game, but... Good lord. But anyway, um... This game just did it second best. Final Fantasy VII? Maybe that's in the top 10, maybe, maybe. Now I haven't looked at chat in probably a good 30 minutes, so. If any of y'all have any legit questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or ignore them while the boss fight happens. I, either, either or. Oh my. I think I was just going too fast, to be honest. Questing for, for glory gods were like, dude. What's this guy trying to do? To be underestimate? My, my bad, man. You're welcome, Rivers. Specifically, Rivers. Hmm. I don't even have enough for Sue's. Let's go. All right, it's lap for time. Guess who's gonna survive this fight, even though I already gave it away. Did I have d band in this macro? Not really a big deal, but it's wrong. It did. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So the big thing here with this dude is he's gonna AoE attack you a lot, and uh, good luck keeping everybody up. That's just kind of where it's at. Uh, I'll do the mates. Essentially, the deal is gonna be that. You're gonna have Rune Gifoid basically every single turn. And then uh, Rika will attack when she can, otherwise she will heal. Okay, um, let's do that and that. And that's what you're gonna do every single turn. Okay, this is a, a little slow. Unfortunately, I had to use a bunch of TP to heal. So Chad's only gets to swing his sword, which is not doing a whole lot of damage. Usually you try to bust out some Sue, but it's not really a big deal. So now we're, we're really gonna be in the same kind of routine. We'll double slash Gift Boy if we can, otherwise we'll heal and Gift Boy if we need to. And hope we don't run out of TP, basically. Um, from there, really the big way to possibly run out of TP, which I'm well on my way to doing so, is if Zeo continuously, continuously single targets, which he's been doing so far. But as you can see, if I want to keep attacking with Rika, I'm also going to have to heal her as well, even if he, even if he is AOA. Might be good to play this a little safe. Especially since I've already used all of my non-magic healing. So then another option you have is just for Rika to defend every turn. Um, because even a single target, as you see, does basically nothing. But, in situations like this, where if he hits Rune, then you're still gonna have to pop a heal off anyway. And then, yeah, so he's basically being incredibly, incredibly unfriendly. Not in any danger yet, but... Oh my goodness. Starting to get a little stressed out, a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep defending. He's not super duper close to dead, but we are getting there. There we go. But as you can see, you could pretty much do this all day long if he AoEs a bunch. Or if he is gonna single target, do it on Rika. We'll be fine, though. Defending was definitely the right call, I think. Yeah. Got him. And there you have it. Seems kind of messed up, right? Like, oh man, Rika and Rune are just getting everything. Like, what about everyone else? Gotta remember that Grizz and Demi, I'm actually gonna lose them right now. Um, I don't care about them. But, uh, Chaz, unfortunately, has been kind of getting the shaft. He hasn't really powered up at all. Um... But he'll, he'll have this moment. Rune's good. Generally, Rika is like probably the best character in the game, and it's always helpful to have her beefy anyway. So everything's fine. Everyone's gonna catch up eventually, so. Anyway, yeah, we killed the bad guy, Zio. He was the one causing all the problems. It just so happens though, um, even though we fixed are, are fixing that machine. There's one more machine to fix in space. So we're going to outer space, y'all. We're gonna go to the satellite, and once we get to the satellite, everything's gonna be taken care of. And we will have won the game. And I just clearly just had an incredibly, incredibly safe estimate. Just in case, you know? 
Even though we're gonna beat the game real soon here, we're just gonna pick up these items. All right, here's Ren. And what he'll tell us is actually this satellite's doing fine. It's actually the other satellite where there's a problem. Oh, okay. It wasn't this satellite, it was the other, it was the other satellite. So now we gotta go to the other satellite and he's gonna, he's gonna join us. So we're, we're feeling pretty good here. We got the big boy, big boy robot. specifically. Menus are laggy. Shop menus are probably the worst, but your in-game menu is not super great. And so there's a lot of times where I'm actually, in some isolated cases, I'm doing my inputs too fast, and I'll put it in like a down input. Um, while you're in menu lag, and it actually won't take, so and then you sit there wondering why the game isn't doing what you want it to do. And obviously it's the job of the player to work around it, but sometimes you just, sometimes you just mess up, man. But anyway, we're going to the other satellite and then our ship gets sabotaged. We just got this ship, man. It's already, already done. And so we have to crash land in the other planet in the system, these Uh, we'll, we'll take on the next stretch of the game. character. He will be our new fifth. Essentially, um, we have our core four party members already now. Chaz, Rika, Rune, and Ren. They will remain in the party the entire rest of the game. And our fifth member will cycle in and out, if we have a fifth member at all. So Raja will take the place of our fifth right now. And uh, since he is technically temporary, we will be killing him off a lot. He is very much like a heal, very powerful healer. Um, I'm trying to think of the term, because it's not really glass cannon, because he doesn't do damage so much as he heals a bunch, but yeah. He's very good, just very squishy. And again, regardless of how good he is, every piece of experience he gets is technically a waste, because he's going to leave and not come back, so... gonna spend a lot of time dying. We're just hitting a story trigger here. I already know where to go, but you have to talk to this guy, unfortunately. Oops. Okay, so basically we have put him in the front, so he's most likely to get hit, he being Raja. And we stripped him of all his gear and put the armor on Rune. It's better than what he had, and then, uh, yeah, we're ready to carry on. Rika's got ears. So 
Well, experience routing is going to come into play again, sort of um, less intense than other routes, but this is where we want to start catching Chazza. Well, let me, let me take that back. Not so much catch him up as actually give him experience now. Uh, this next boss that we're eventually going to get to, well, no, excuse me, it's about two bosses from now. Um, he's weak against, um, I believe what is, oh, that, this is an insane amount of surprise attacks. Uh, I lost my train of thought now because this is so crazy, but yeah. Uh, he's weak against like the light element, which uh, Sue and Githu and Nathu are, and so we want Chaz to hit level 17 before we fight him, so we can do some massive damage. Yeah, so here's the thing, like, I, I saw a quick comment about it in chat, um, about like Raja casually. Um, he's one of the best characters, straight up. And then when you're at casual levels and you have good gear, and again, specifically the levels, um, like he, he makes your party very stable. He's incredible. Um, he's a great healer, and then mo perhaps even more importantly than that, is he has an ability, pretty much the only ability in the game, I think, that actually refills your TP. Besides going to an inn or something like that. So that, that capability there is just massive. Now the trade-off again is that he's incredibly fragile, but you grind enough and that stops mattering. Um, this is a speedrun, so you can imagine we will not be putting in that kind of time. And so unfortunately Raja for us is not, not something we can do. Am I playing in the can? Only if you want me to. So we're doing a little bit of side content again. Even though it's extra and you might think, oh, this is like this is like a really slow thing to do. Oops. Um, it gives a lot of experience and right now. And really, for most of the game, you, you're gonna you start to need experience on the regular. So um, now it's not so much about avoiding fights, so much as it is trying to get it as efficiently as possible. And so, even though this is extra content, the amount of experience he gives is just way too good to pass up. And it's not like the fight takes like that long. So it's really not a big deal. Like, doing that is definitely going to be way faster than however many encounters it would take to get the same amount of experience. continue. Does Kira get XP like Rune? So no, because Kira hasn't joined yet. She won't be getting anything that I earn right now. She just will start at her static level. Now when she leaves, and then you go through the end game, she will earn experience the same way Rune was earlier. But right now, she's not gaining anything. Because I haven't met her yet. I 
I know I said I want to fight encounters. Um, there's just certain encounters that are not worthwhile, including the ones I was running away from. Uh, but this is good. It's unfortunate that it was an ambush, but it's still good. And so it's just one of those things, ideally, you get quote-unquote minimal fights. Again, there's still a level threshold I'm trying to meet, which is Chaz level 17. And then whoever gains levels on the way to that, that's good too. But the worst case scenario is that you don't get enough encounters. Or you get a bunch of encounters and they're ones you can't fight. Or you get a bunch of encounters and they're kind of bad like this one, even though it's still like, I gotta get something, right? So, ideally you get really, really lucrative encounters and just only every so often, but like I said, like, you, you, you're gonna meet the threshold. You're not fighting the boss without Chaz 17. So if you have to sit there in the last room grinding battles over and over and over again, then that's what you have to do. And obviously that's not particularly fast, so we're hoping to avoid something like that. But it's out of my control. Just whatever encounters come up are whatever encounters that come up. We don't have a revive right now except Rune, so um, even though it kind of feels like maybe isn't down that much health, it's important that I heal him pretty regularly. Usually just try to keep him above 100. So I, I won't heal him now, but... Nice plasma dagger. Technically, this is an extra item. I guess it depends on their, your routing as well. Um, but we will be using it. Because this is a marathon, quote-unquote, safe route. So, we'll definitely grab the napalm shot. We'll see it in action later. We just got Chaz level 17, and we actually still have two more screens to get through. That's good. Everything else is just a little cherry on top. But we have hit the bare minimum level that we need, and that's what we'll do. So if I don't get any other encounters that I can use, then so be it. It's not a problem. Mmm, sure. Probably didn't need this, but let's do it anyway. Right, this is definitely another one of those fights I have to concentrate on, so I apologize, but... I probably won't be saying too much. Dark Force. We kill it, we fix the system, we beat the game, right? That's that's how this works. So we're gonna set up buffs and then just kind of try to keep track of damage. I'm 
Come on, Raja. Okay, so I, I definitely played it very cautiously. Um, I really want to wait out everyone but Chaz and Ren to die, and um, you can definitely make it way more efficient than I've done. You can also kind of get screwed over when you're really trying to tread that line. Um, so essentially, I just played it really cautiously, and if it takes a while for my party to die off, then so be it. I prefer that over something else happening. Honestly, this wasn't that bad for as cautious as it was. It, it could have been way the heck worse, so I'm not too worried about it. So I know what you're thinking. What about everybody else? Well, you can imagine Ru Rune and Rika, I've had enough experience. They're, they're good. So Chaz is the one who kind of needs that boost. And so does Ren. I mean, Ren didn't really get the shaft. He's just really good. It takes a long time to level up. It's important that he's leveled up, and so you may as well boost him as well. There's no, you know, there's no real need to boost Chaz quite that much. Just a kind of another window into the experience routing of who needs what, where, and when. Um, Everybody needs to be at a certain level by the time you're at the last boss, and we'll be about 30, 31 um, at the end. Well, excuse me, you'd be about 30, 31 um, in PB attempts. We'll probably be about 33, maybe, somewhere around there, depending on the character. Let's say an average of 33. Um, so clearly everyone needs to level up, but um, not everybody's at the same point. Like, not everybody's going up the scale at the same point. So, um, you kind of, there's just, you know, weirdo times where some people get boosted farther than others. And then later on you have them die and then boost the others past them or at the same spot. So that, that's kind of what's happening right there. Alright, so... Lore Dump at this point in time is basically nothing that was supposed to fix the issues have fixed the issues. Um, and so we're going to kind of keep exploring what's going on here by exploring more of um, Gizolus. 
And to be able to do that and break through the ice, we've been given the Ice Digger, which is our next vehicle. We're still not really gonna do vehicle battles for the most part. Um, outside of situations like this, where it's pretty packed, clearly easy to kill, but as you can see, you don't get a lot out of it. Um, or if it's a battle where I could technically die from if I'm incredibly unlucky. Let's double check again. Just, just making sure Raja's gear is gone for, as you can imagine, no real particular reason. And once you have come to this town, Mies, basically, they're, they're gonna tell you that um, there's a strange illness going around that they're trying to help. They don't know where it's coming from, so they're basically the band-aid to, to try to help this problem, but they don't really know the root cause. And then, lo and behold, Raja gets sick as well, and you lose him. So again, temporary party member. And then, coincidentally, you get introduced to the next character, Kira, and you have to go get her um, right now. In a normal PB attempt, you would actually skip getting her for a bit. But we're actually just going to grab her right now. Um, I get out of the vehicle and then walk in to save myself some text boxes. And then this battle you're just supposed to run away from. And you meet Kira, so we didn't we didn't go very long without a fifth party member. You could, there's there's some side stuff I could have done without her, but um, for the purposes of this this specific route, uh, we'll be getting her immediately. And um, we have now entered essentially the by far the largest grinding portion of this game, very akin to. If any FF1 fans are out there, um, we're kind of going to be entering our Agama grind. Although we won't literally be killing one enemy over and over again. Um, and as far as like, hey, I'm gaining levels, and hey, I'm going to be gaining levels for a while, um, that's what's about to be happening right now. Um, anyone who may have played this game casually may know, at this point in the game, the difficulty curve rises exponentially. The content you're about to do, if I just went ahead and started it right now, is is very tough. Um, even in a normal speedrun PB attempt, you grind in this section um, to prepare yourself for it. And for this to become more marathon safe, we're just going to grind um, a lot more than you would in a PB attempt. In a PB attempt, from the death of Dark Force 1 to the end of your grind, is roughly, you know, anywhere between 17 and 19 minutes. Um, not all of that's grinding, obviously there's lots of story stuff and shopping and blah blah blah. But that's about the time frame. Um, whereas in our in our case, from the death of Dark Horse 1 um, to moving on, it's actually going to be 30-something uh, minutes instead. So, uh, buckle in. You've been enjoying yourself perfectly fine time to take a bit of a break because I'm going to be in three different dungeons, but um, I will be in those three different dungeons just getting experience for the most part. So yeah. Um, I think this cutscene is very cool as far as truly starting to tie certain things together because um, the character Lutz is mentioned, and Lutz is actually in Fantasy Stars 1 and 2, and now in 4, and so they kind of talk about how that's possible, because that spans two, 3,000 years. Um, and so they kind of explain that basically Lutz's body is no more, but Lutz's consciousness, like, persists. And there's always someone who takes on his consciousness, I think Rune is fifth in line or something like that. Um, and so... Um, since none of the machine facilities fix the problem, uh, excuse me, that's not, that's not the right name. Let's see here, let's see here. If your armor is off, put you on, put you on. Was I saying? Yes, it's... None of those facilities we went to were... The, the, the 
thing that Raja was trying to war warn us about was this place called Garuba Tower. Which speedrunners of this game occasionally call Garbage Tower, because it's a pretty rough place. Um, but... Point being, uh, it's kind of next in line of like, well, nothing we've tried has worked so far, so we may as well try there. Because there's all those carnivorous trees in the way, you can't just walk in. So our next step is to go get an item called the Eclipse Torch, which is supposed to be in the exact temple that I'm in. Nice walking. Um, so we can burn the trees down. Now why they haven't just done it on their own already, I'll never know, but... It's fine. Will I be getting Medjid? No. Cool spell, um, but it's just extra content that takes too long to get and doesn't really make anything faster. Ah. My slipper fell off my foot. And then, of course, to really prolong the game, you don't get to just go get the Eclipse Torch and go to Garuber Tower. The Eclipse Torch gets stolen by the triplets who are in service of Lashik, a major boss from the first game who apparently is not dead. And instead of going where we want to go... Ah, I see what happened. Okay. That's not where I want. Okay, one one second. This is not this is not part of anything. But this is something I needed to do. So um, now we have to do an entire whole other dungeon before we get to do the ne the next actual story thing. I mean, it, it's a story thing. It's not side content, but like. The point is that you already know you're supposed to go to Gruber Tower, and then now you just can't because the story says so. And of course that dungeon is the air castle, which is a pretty brutal dungeon, so... The air castle will be the first major point I can die and lose a good chunk of time. Um, and we're just gonna hope that doesn't happen. In the meantime, like I mentioned before, because the air castle, specifically the first boss of the air castle, is two, um, can just outright wipe you. Um, reason one of a lot, to be honest, or I guess it just comes in handy a lot to have these extra levels I'm about to get, is to really decrease the chances that I, wa I just straight wipe in the air castle. Um, we're not gonna be leveling everyone super extra. Everyone's gonna be a little extra. Um, but Rika and Ren specifically will be two characters. We'll be leveling a lot uh, when we do this extra long grinding portion. I don't, I say extra long in the sense of comparing it to the speedrun itself, uh, that you wouldn't normally do this. So this is kind of an unfortunate English. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Basically the danger here is that they use lightning on the Ren, but we're safe. That's good. We got pretty lucky there. For it being an ambush, pretty lucky.
Uh, you would come to this dungeon in a PB attempt as well. Um, like I said, regardless of, like, even though we're going to be doing a substantial amount of extra grinding for marathon safety, or as much marathon safety as we can get, um, you would still come here because, again, to prepare for the air castle, you still need experience and money in here. That, you're not getting away with it without that stuff. got out turned. I can't say I expected uh, Ren to go last there, but that puts me in a pretty rough spot. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, so up until Chaz is level 25, Rune is the only one with, uh, Revive. And so if Rune happens to be the one that dies, like he just did, I'm gonna have no way to revive him. Which, uh, might bite me in the butt, but it kinda just is what it is. It's gonna have to bank on the fact that it's not gonna happen again. In fairness, it's not the end of the world. Um, since this is a marathon route, I'll be picking up extra soul dues anyway, so it, it, it can definitely be a when it rains it pours sort of situation, but in the meantime, I'm definitely not in like actual trouble. I just obviously would have preferred to not have that happen. It just kind of is what it is. I do have enough money. Let's just fight one more. Didn't really need to, but whatever, why not? Okay, let's do that. Out of here. Uh, let's go to Zosa. Take Kira's armor off. Sell some junk. buy a Fanta robe and put it on right now. It's a nice slight agility booster for whoever's wearing it, which will typically be Kira. And we'll buy a flame sword, that's for later. Okay. Uh, make some new macros. So we're getting a cutscene now. As soon as you get set up for the air castle, meaning you did the Guruber, not Guruber Tower, Gumbius Temple cutscene, you have a cutscene to play out the air castle. You don't, you don't have to go. So we'll just, we'll just back out because we have way the hell more grinding to do. We were just in the weapons factory. It's one of the side dungeons. Again, you would normally go there in a PB attempt anyway for new armor for Ren and for money and experience. 
Well, where we are going now is the Climate Center, which is not a place you would ever go in the speed run. Um, technically, the experience here is not super great, but um, you get one item in here that's quite useful. I guess it's technically a trade-off. Because in the Weapons Factory, they're gonna, you're gonna get more per battle. But they're definitely more dangerous enemies, and you have to take the time to heal almost certainly, and blah blah blah. Whereas here, you're gonna get less per battle, but they tend to be killed off easier. So there is that. It's just a bit of a trade off. Okay, so. Where are we have Kira, she needs 8,400 experience. Wow, we okay. So my first, the first threshold I'm attempting to meet is Kira 28. She's 27 right now, and she still needs like 7,500 XP to level. So we'll be here for a minute for sure. Um, even once she gets her level, we're not done here yet. We will also be going um, until Chaz is level 23. But his will be a slightly easier climb, specifically because uh, once Kira's 28, I'm going to kill her off. Apparently, we didn't kill. Nice one. The nice thing about coming in here is getting a new gun for Wen. Um, you keep his pulse laser the entire freaking run under normal circumstances. So, and it's it's good because it hits every enemy as long as he hits at all. But it, as you can imagine, it being like the, one of the first guns that he gets and you keep it all game long, like his damage isn't particularly great. So it's just generally kind of nice to have an upgrade. Now on a PB attempt, you wouldn't waste your time coming here. Way more important that you go to the weapons factory for that gear more so than this gun here. Almost dead again. Good times. I'm gonna try to ride that line with Kira. I don't want her to die. Yet. But, obviously the less HP she has, when I need her to die, the better. You want to know what's going to be happening the next, I don't know, because I don't have a timer going on or anything like that. But I would assume 15 minutes, like, even if I won't necessarily be specifically here, this is what we're going to be up to for the next 15 minutes for sure, so. You can make your own decisions from there. Okay, um... I see. Wow, I didn't kill. Interesting. Alright. Sometimes you just start out turning everybody, so it's probably important now that I waste a turn. And, uh... Of course, it doesn't uh, doesn't help if they don't attack her. Okay, I think. 
think we need one more level with Chaz with that. Yeah, that looks right. How much does he need? 9,300. Why does it feel like I'm like ultra behind on experience? <laughs> It's probably normal. No, that's Slow Weapons Factory. That was the place I was in before now. They look basically the same, of course, but... Sorry, the question is, is, is this where enemies merge to make life leaders? And the answer is it's the Weapons Factory, which is the dungeon I was at before this one. This is the Climate Center. I'm out of humans, and this is gonna be unfortunate. Well, that's not terrible. Uh, no, that's not his level. Alright. Should be one or two more battles, though. This is for the Sega Genesis, as far as the platform that it was on. Very much a Sega game. Blast processing. You can tell by the blast processing. Cool. Alright. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Alrighty, so let's reorder this to Chaz in front. Let's take Chaz's stuff off. Oh, you can keep your sword on, I suppose. Um, and then uh, you're gonna put the napalm shot on. Put these shields on. And then we're gonna make a macro of attack. Flame sword, flaily. And then we're gonna Ryuka back to Zosa. And this will be the last. But technically, longest leg of the grind. Every enemy in here is weak to fire. Um, we were, and so there's kind of two strats get, that's gonna happen here. One, clearly we're gonna use a bunch of fire everything. And two, um, Rune and Rika are gonna be the ones this last leg of the grind. Rune, uh, sorry, what did I say? Ren and Rika. Rune gonna gain one more level, then I'm killing him off too. Um, and since we're gonna be here for a while, it's important that we don't use abilities that are finite. Because you're gonna run out of them. So I could use Flare, for example. You do get a lot of Flares, but I'm gonna fight more battles than 17 Flares, than the 17 Flares that I have, or whatever it is. Uh, so you need to use things that aren't going to run out. So that's where the napalm shot comes in. I don't, I personally do not use it outside, outside of this kind of setting. Um, I think maybe other runners do. And then, um, Rika, you could have her 
have one claw and a ceramic shield because for some reason having the shield still gives her attack or fire buff or whatever, fire element. But um, again, you would need to use double slashes and after you, you know, ran out of the eight or whatever that I have, like, okay, then what are you gonna do, right? So, um, oops. Definitely important that you're using stuff that you can use over and over and over again. This isn't technically the last grind spot of the game, um, but like I said before, um, this is easily the, the, the longest leg of it, and so... Uh, apologies if this portion is a, li is a little rough, but uh, in order to add a certain amount of marathon safety to this run, it's kind of what you have to do. Uh, this run basically is known for you just dying, everywhere, losing the run. I'm like, okay, sure, like, I can, I can up my estimate or something like that. It's like, yeah, but that, uh, that's only gonna take you so far, so. So, the, the, the idea that has been chosen is like, well, okay, you lengthen the grind session, because you do grind here anyway, but if you lengthen it, and then just kind of carry on, like, yeah, this takes a bit, it does, that's just kind of the reality, um, you lower your chances of wiping immensely. It can still happen, and in fact, it did happen yesterday. But, you know, just kind of, you know, there it is. There's only so much you can do without that just taking, like, forever. This is unfortunate. And a lot of, for a lot of reasons. Big thing here is that moles are fast. They tend to outspeed you. So they're probably going to attack before you do. Like so. There's four enemies, which means this is going to be a very lucrative encounter, but it's just going to take a while. And then they ambushed me, so I just, just took a freaking while. <laughs> is what it is. But yeah, this is this is it right here. Get cozy. Rika is level 28, and we are not leaving here until after she's 31. Now you're that's three levels, and you're seeing the battles themselves don't take super long. So yeah, we're not here literally forever, but. We've already been in two different dungeons, getting gear, yes, but fighting encounters too. Now we're going to be fighting encounters here as well. Um, I guess I neglected to mention the, the leader of this cave was a giant cat who just gave me a, a ball called the Silver Tusk, which is strong against evil. I will not be using it for the time being. I've already gotten it. Uh, I just kind of neglected to talk about it. I was busy blab blabbering while I was doing that, so apologies. Yeah, there's been some comments, maybe at, at least a couple, about remakes of this game, and I have really mixed feelings about it, just because, like... It's so good already on its own. It's basically perfect. Like, there's really small things I would do, like not reset the music track when you get encounters, and maybe slightly lighten up on the encounter rate, but, like, other than that, like, this game is aged quite nicely, unlike the first three, so what do you do with this game? It's already really great.
And if you did try to address it with today's technology, I don't know, man. Because then you really ultimately are going to give it something more of like a 7 remake treatment. It's like, I like that game a lot, by the way. But I don't know that I want something like that for this. Yeah, that's Meow in the cave. I guess it's like implied anyway. I think it's pretty fair to not tell the player which items are usable in battle. I don't think that needs to happen. But... Players knowing what all the techniques do, that's definitely it. That's definitely a thing. <laughs> like, it's still an old game, right? There's still, like, certain things that's like, ah, games don't really need to be like that anymore, but... That's honestly being fairly nitpicky about a game that came out in the early 90s. This game is really good. Yeah, so you're probably hearing my cat going insane. I apologize. I'm sure no one really minds, but... Okay, so that's 31, so we're gonna get about 10,000 more additional experience, and we're gonna be out of here. So a big thing about the route is, um, again, even though you would be getting, you would do, you'd be doing some grinding here to prepare, it's not like leveling is over after that. And so the way you continually get experience uh, throughout the speedrun is through the battles you have to take in all of the remaining dungeons anyway, because you're going to have a pretty hard time running from most of them. So you have to fight them. Again, this is where macro routing comes in, which ones are good, um, which ones are very efficient, blah, 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 and make use of different abilities. And in the speedrun, that's how you get your experience, is just fighting everything that you're coming across. And we're still going to do that. Because even with these extra levels, I'm still not really going to be able to run from a lot of stuff anyway. And so this, this extra grinding that I've done just kind of further propels us. Um, it's not that I'm a higher level... Oh my god. <laughs> it's not that I'm higher level now and then, you know, it's whatever later. Like... We're going to keep gaining levels to the point where we're higher level than we usually are throughout the entire rest of the game. And that is ideally what provides us the safety net. Um, but like I said before, there's a couple of places I can still just outright die. And uh, while unfortunate, it just kind of is what it is. Alrighty, so let's see. Rune here. Not Rune. Oh, 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 messed up there. Okay, and then... Plasma Claw. Get that out. I may as well just take the time to just make sure my gear is solid here. Okay. And then, uh... Great. Uh, so we got to do the last of our buying. And we will finally be off to the actual story content, which will be like the air castle. A very, very, very long dungeon, by the way. Uh, let's see, you do not need a napalm shot. No, oh my god, do not sell that. Dude. I 
We're gonna buy ourselves some trimates. Um, you have monomates, diamates, trimates, and they're just single target heals. That just heal increasing amounts. Trimates, for the levels I'll ever be, are gonna full heal whoever it is every time. Buy a nice sword for Chaz. You may know that I already have a flame sword, but it's actually not great outside of one situation. I still didn't make my macro, so let's go ahead and do that as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, nope. Let's go. Kind of bungled those menus, but... No, those menus are definitely not lag-free. Very laggy. As you start two is also laggy. Neither of them are... No, no, nothing is Final Fantasy V except Final Fantasy V when it comes to menus. Well, I shouldn't say nothing. I'm, I'm sure there's other games out there, but there's, there's not a lot of them. Um, dimensional worms only are the only encounters I'll run from, because they're the only ones that are easy to run from. Everything else I'm going to fight, including this unfortunate encounter. Would have preferred three of them, but it's alright. 800 experience is not a lot, but there's not a whole lot of encounters you can run from. You can run from the specters, technically, but they're easy kills. Frost Sabers and Hawk and Lefts or whatever they are. Um, Blade Rites, I can't remember. Uh, Stoneheads, all that stuff's pretty hard to run from, so. We will be fighting them. And every little bit adds up. Like I said, we're not like done leveling, we're just done grinding. But if I have to fight most of these encounters anyway, then okay, like, then we'll fight them. Uh, like, obviously, if I don't really have a choice, then it's not really worth talking about, I guess, but we'll still be gaining levels. We're not done gaining levels, we're just, for the most part, done sitting in one spot gaining levels. But yeah, the, the big shift now, starting with the air castle and beyond, is the fact that enemies do a lot of damage. It's not that you're ill-equipped to kill them, but they do a lot of damage. And the dungeons are really, really long. And so, even casually, it's like, oh man, how do you get through this safely? And then, and then be able to kill a boss after. And then in a speed run, those two questions still exist with that added question of like, how do you get through these encounters as fast as possible? And so, previous to coming to this dungeon, you know, I made, let's see, four macros to deal with encounters in this place. And even then, I think he used a total of six in encounters here across the board. Um, four that I made, one that I made previously in the weapons factory that I'm still gonna use. And then uh, one that I have yet to make. Looks like my cat's gonna poop, so I'm gonna mute my mic for a little bit.
Alright. Sorry about that. But looks like that business is done. In about 12 minutes, you're also going to hear the sounds of my cat's auto feeder. So look forward to that. Tuxedo pattern. Uh, Chad's gonna wake up. He will. I guess I will try to fight it. That's. That is some. Oh my god. Okay. I. I'm going to run. Oh, uh, maybe I won't run. But I am gonna walk back to the. Heel square. Or, nah, I guess I don't really need to do that. I guess I'm just more annoyed than anything else. <laughs> what is this turn order? I'm sorry. I, I, do, I do not understand. We're moving on. I apologize. I'm just... I'm just shocked. <laughs> for wishing good fortune upon me. He was talking to the person with 37 cats. Shoot. can't really go all out with the abilities that you use, so... It's alright. We're gonna move on. There's something about the air castle and questing for glory. They just don't go together very well. That's alright. We made it. Okay, everyone's healed. Make sure the plasma field is on. And it's triplet time. See if you can guess the strategy.
If your strategy was make Rika invincible and watch everybody else die, you were correct. Notoriously difficult boss. Like, they don't have tons of hit points, but my god, did they do a lot of damage. So hard. So there's a couple of things that get put into place for that battle. Number one, mitigation, specifically for Rika. Between Ren casting Barrier and her having the Plasma Field equipped, um, she will take one damage from their three-person AoE, Thunder Blast or whatever it's called. There's that aspect of it. Aspect number two is that if you use an AOE tart ability on them, they are guaranteed to use their action um, as Thunder Blast, which means I'm guaranteed Rika wise to take one damage. Everyone else can take a billion. So basically, you're just always hitting them with ability attacks so that they're always Thunder Blasting you. So that Rika is always taking one damage. So ultimately, the fight is theoretically not very dangerous in the slightest, except for one key thing. That first turn is where everything matters. You need Ren, ideally, to cast Barrier, not necessarily first, but before any of them go. And then the other part is, is, um, Ideally, you're also hitting them with an ability, uh, AoE ability, also before they've gone. Because one thing that can happen is that two of them can go, then you hit them with an AoE, then the third one does the AoE in response. Um, and that's, that's, that's unfortunate, right? So you want some wonderful combination of, like, you get barrier and you hit them with an attack before they do. Now, ideally, both of those happen before they do anything, but you'll pro especially with the marathon safety involved, um, as long as you barrier first, or even if you don't get the barrier up yet, but you get you get them to trigger their AOE on you right away without them taking any extra turns, then you're going to be okay too. Um, yeah, that's a lot of what the Marathon Safety provides is higher levels means higher agility, which means more likely to go first. But I have wiped there even with the extra levels, so it's not guaranteed. And so the other aspect of Marathon Safety, quote-unquote, is that you have more HP to deal with it. Even then, as long as you get that barrier off, you can probably make it work. It's just going to take a really long time. But as far as a marathon run is concerned, like, what I care about ultimately is did I not wipe that? And I didn't. So I'm, I'm very happy. That's a complicated question. It depends on who you're talking about and um, when in the run you're talking about, which I'm happy to address. The question, of course, is um, it's marathon safety plus two levels over the speed run. Um, if I wasn't hitting Lashik pretty much right now, I'd probably give you an immediate answer. But um, I'm probably gonna have to hold that answer until 
after the boss. Apologies. Okay, now we're gonna put the flame sword on because the sheik is weak to fire. Uh, let's go ahead and start making macros. Oops. safety makes Kira have Warla before this fight, which typically does not happen. It saves me a turn of buffing. Good, we didn't get out turned. That would be my cat's auto feeder. So this is a, a boss from PS1. He's back. He's extending my speedrun by existing. All right, uh, no, 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 Orla, Nat Boy, Okay. Good. Our buff's up. As you can see, it takes a lot of damage from fire. That's why it's worth buying the flame sword. Okay. So we're then gonna recover. We're gonna blow our first Stardew, which is an AoE heal, so that Shaz can get buffed freely, because Rika is usually the healer. We'll use an um, item heal instead, just so we can get that buff off as soon as possible. And you can see he'll swing for over 300 damage, which is just wonderful. Let's just, we'll use a second Stardew, because another gate hurts a lot. And I'm gonna try to not use a third one, but we'll see what happens. At this point in time, we're just very much in a DPS race against each other. Just one of us trying to kill the other before the other. You can see the magic of macros. Just has everything set up. I'm going to be doing essentially the same things every time. Um, wow, that hurt. Let's see. Recover, Metis, Napoy, Pisar. I'm gonna try to hold off on using a third star dude, though, so uh, we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Uh, let's, well, let's just use it. I don't think I've seen a Lashik this bad in a while. This is actually pretty impressive. What makes it bad is that another gate is a spell he doesn't even have to use one time, let alone the three times he's used it. And because it does more damage than Thunder Halbert, one Gisar is typically not good enough. So that's why you have to start burning Stardews. Um, I don't like burning Stardews when I don't have to, but I have had to. It is what it is. Using three, honestly, is fine. I have four. Uh, it's really bad when you have to use four. Three is like, you can you can make three. It's, it's not a huge deal. He'll be dead this turn, though. That's why I didn't deal. We got him. So a couple pieces of marathon safety makes that fight better. Um, usually Rika has to do both the agility buff and the physical damage buff, and then has to buff Chaz. So you're usually dropping two, tar two Stardews right off the bat. Um, when you level Kira a little bit extra, she'll gain Warla, which is a better D-ban, basically. Um, and it saves a turn of buffing. Uh, that, that's, that's already great on its own, for sure. Marathon Safety also, since we have extra levels, just gives me much more HP, which is also nice. Uh, 
Let's see here. Let me macro some stuff real quick. Oops. What's next? Uh, oh my god. Blanket. Um, yes, that's right. I'm having a hard time menuing. Not gonna lie. Not really sure why. But yeah, there's some there's some nice touches. Like even though Air Castle feels like a detour, in, in a way it is. Maybe it's a little too fan servicey, I don't know, but the callbacks to Fantasy Star 1 are nice, including the second part of the Air Castle being the exact same layout as the Air Castle in Fantasy Star 1, which I know some pretty sure someone mentioned in chat already. But it's cool. But uh, now you finally get to go on with the story, and that is to enter the Rubric Tower. Um, this place is rough. So one thing about the Air Castle, yes, it's really long. Even when you know where you're going, it's, it's really long, right? But, um, it has that heel circle, um, that you, that you get when you're traversing it the first time. And in between Triplets and Lashik, you can just leave. And that's cool. The problem with Garuga Tower is that it's also very difficult. It's also very long, but there is no break. You have to just kind of do it in one go. That's what makes this part different. Um, and every, every little thing adds up. It's a long dungeon, you can get a lot of encounters, which also means you can get a lot of ambushes. You can have Rune almost die. I do have another revive spell, so it'd be okay if you did. But... And like, honestly, you can just straight up run out of healing in here in the speedrun. If this walk is bad enough, even Marathon Safety won't save me from that being in that situation. Um, so, it's just a... Before you even talk about how long you spend in here, and it's a speedrun ride, you want everything to be fast. You may not survive the place. It can be very stressful. And then, yeah, of course, the more encounters you get, the more ambushes you get, the more unlucky turn orders you get, the more damage you take, all of those things cost you time. And you can spend a very, 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 very long time in here. I need to start being a bit more stingy with my macro B. Pretty rough start so far, actually. It's not. It, it can definitely be worse, and it has been worse on many occasions. But it's not a great start. I'll just let me start with that. Oh my goodness. Okay. keep like second guessing myself when I'm gonna accidentally teleport out because that's never happened before or I'm gonna heal the wrong person so I keep menuing kind of slow. <laughs> Probably better to do that than make a mistake but always nice to get through a room without an encounter. Every, every little bit helps. DM Lars definitely running away. No point there. But like, definitely as the dungeons go on, they get more and more maze-like. This one's 
rough, generally. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna be out of macro bees real fast here. Um, and then there's just an added mechanic. Oh no. Oh, okay. What was I saying? There's an added mechanic where um, if you don't understand that there's switches in this place, um, then you can very much feel like, oh, I've been everywhere. Um, there's nowhere to go, but these switches that you hit actually kind of extend the dungeon and like open up extra areas. It's like you have these long winding corridors, you have some pretty good items in here, including the POW shield that I got earlier, which is very much like the shift spell in that it buffs your attack, and now I don't have to um, worry about someone needing to cast it. I can just, anyone who I want to have use it can just use the item. And you can't have two people use the same item in the same turn. But nice. But other than that, Getting through okay. The first two rooms were pretty rough, but the rest has been okay. Even this ambush. I accept your terms. Ren. Ren, we need to talk. We need to talk, Ren. We'll talk after the, the run's over. I don't need to bust you out in front of everybody. That's better. That's more like it. Fantasy Star 2 soundtrack is quite good. I would say very clear in a way, not as good as this one, and also has way less songs. But Fantasy Star 2 songs are all good. But I would not in any way, shape, or form call it better than 4, or even that, or even say that they match. That's just me though, of course. Fantasy Star Online, and what do I think of them? I've only played Fantasy Star Online, the first and second one on the Dreamcast. Didn't play any others. And it's hard to say, I don't feel like I would enjoy PSO now. Probably way too grindy, but I put in a crap ton of hours back when they were new. Two, three screens left. I never got to Killin' Wood's question. Of course, I would only remember at the end of the dungeon. So, Kira, Chaz, and Rune are really only going to be two, maybe three levels higher than usual. 
Um, Ren, I think, is also going to be about three levels higher than usual, which doesn't sound great. But you gotta remember, he takes way more experience to level up than anybody else, so that's pretty meaningful. And Rika will be, I don't even know, four plus, <laughs> so she gains extra levels. Haven't had a single Genocide Claw rock yet. Kind of irrelevant now that I'm in the last room. Alrighty. So finally you get to the top of the tower and it's like, holy crap, it's Dark Force again. Like, didn't we kill him? Past games, you only have ever killed one Dark Force. Suddenly there's two now. But before you can really sit in there and think about it, you gotta kill him. Okay, we did not get out turn. Marathon safety at work. Um, you could get light showered before barrier hits and then die. Um, so thankfully that didn't happen. Have to do the entire dungeon all over again. That would not be fun. Uh, let's see here, Metis, and then uh, I guess you can power shield. Oh, I mean, if you want to give me a free turn, I'm not gonna say no. There's some variance in this fight. Marathon safety negates a lot of it. Um, obviously not all of it. So one of the worst things you can do is use light shower. Um, light shower and AOE. I'm not gonna die from it. Um, but since you have to spend your time AOE healing, um, then you're gonna pump out less damage. So ideally you want him to single target, like so. Um, especially either Ren or Kira especially in speedrun levels, because they're really the only ones who are going to survive it. And then you can just have one person heal, and then everybody else pumps the damage. Especially when Rika, every time Rika gets to attack and you're seeing her do over 300 damage, um, that's, a, that's a big deal. Um, single targets are good, but they can be bad if they target, let's say, Chaz, for example, or if Rika's a little low or something like that. Um, then that can be problematic, but... Again, Marathon Safety takes out a lot of that. Um, like, for example, in a normal speedrun attempt, those light showers, you wouldn't die, but you don't actually heal as much as they're doing damage to you, so you're kind of slowly but surely losing HP. And then you can die from other stuff, so that can be problematic, but with, Marathon, with the Marathon Safety we've added, it's really not a problem. Um, and so in a speedrun attempt, it's like, please, for the love of God, just single target either Kira or Ren so we can make this go really fast. Um, for now, it's just like, hopefully he just doesn't troll. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna be fine. We're just gonna try to pump out as much damage as possible. But these light showers, like, are slowing me down, but they're not stressing me out. It's like, 
I guess it's a little unfortunate. Fantasy Star speedrun, like, PB attempts, you're much lower level and things are much more nail-biting. And then, so they can be more exciting, at least viewing, um, you know, as, as the runner, things tend to be more attached, at least I do. Um, so I might be more stressed or more annoyed or angry. Um, but things are also just more intense, right? When you have this marathon safety, it's like, you understandably uh, remove a lot of that component because why you're not gonna offer a game up to a marathon and be like okay well my pb is two hours 51 minutes but i could die in seven different places and each time i die i lose five to ten minutes it's like yeah that's not that's not kind of, that's not really all that great right so um, you, would, you do unfortunately have to take that out of the equation and be like, okay, cool, I'm going to do 20 more minutes of grinding than I normally would. Um, a little bit less than that, like 17 minutes. Um, and the funny thing is, is I can still wipe in certain places. Um, but that aside, it's like, okay, yeah, we're probably going to be all right. And then in the process of probably being all right, we're going to kind of bulldoze certain parts too. <laughs> Which, as a speedrunner, it's actually kind of nice. It's like, oh, look how easy this is. But yeah, I can understand it because, you know, things are not as intense. Maybe it's a little less interesting. I can understand that viewpoint. No one said anything to me, but... That's just something I was thinking about. Okay. So. I, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's grind. This will be our last grind in terms of, like, me standing in one place and killing things. We'll be here for a little bit. And so the killing of Dark Force and the destruction of Gruber Tower fixes the climate of Dizolus. So clearly that solved all the problems. However, we're still kind of left like, that's weird. There was more than one Dark Force. Why are all these things happening? Like, why is everything going on? Why did Gumbia's temple just explode out of nowhere? So you go visit them and you get a nice plot dump of like, Dark Force isn't really the root of the evil. He's kind of like a tool of the true evil. It's called the Profound Darkness. Um, you have to find something called Rykros to be able to fight the Profound Darkness. The only way to find Rykros is to find the Arrow Prism. Um, that's fine. That's not fine. And so we think we know where the Arrow Prism is. It's in this place called the Soldier's Temple. And we got yet another vehicle to go find it. I might, I might die from this. Glad no one did. Uh, but before we head there, Again, we have our last bit of grinding to do here. I think I'm gonna save it. Things are getting a little dicey here. see the experience here is fantastic. Well, man, like the encounters are rough. Did 
Kaz is still king. Those were real words that were said by a real person. Where am I? I'm in a place called Bahal Fortress. It is the dungeon you would go to on the final hunter side quest of the game. Uh, so there's a barrier here because it doesn't actually open until you start the side quest and then do one quick thing. But luckily, you can still get into encounters in the entrance here. Uh, grinding here used to be part of the route. It no longer is, but again, marathon safety. You may as well get that slight extra pump in levels there um, before you move on. Okay, so now, my friends, we didn't know that we were getting to the best part of the game, but we're here. It's your boy, Seth. The archaeologist with the greatest mustache in all the land. He's going to join our party. He's going to join us on our quest for the arrow prism. He's so good, I'm putting him in front. He's got death spell. I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. Oops. He also has Corrosion. That's pretty cool, too. It's not weird at all. Look at that. You see that? That's some archaeologist stuff. That's some good archaeologist stuff going on right there. Feel me? Poisoned. Every well, Ren can't get poisoned, but everyone else does. Seth is just a god. Nice ambush. Look at this. Look at that. How cool is that? How cool is that? Boom. Like, what would I even be doing without without this character? How have I even gotten this far without this character? What hopes do I have to beat the game without this character? If Seth had his hair grown out, Seth and Deuce would definitely be the same person. He certainly could. There's nothing Seth can't do.
Okay. Okay. You know what, I'm gonna run from that one. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a floor this has been. <laughs> More experience for me. You should stick Seth in the final party. That would sure make this marathon safe. I would agree. No sarcasm. I would feel a lot better about the last boss if I could bring Seth. Alas. Seth's gear. See ya! He doesn't even need it, TBH. He's just that good. Alright, cutscene. Immediate cutscene. Use the arrow prism. It will lead us to outer space. Rykros is in outer space. Who knew? Oh no, it's Seth, what's happening? He's Dark Force with a mustache. There's three of them now. It's Seth, dude. How, how do you even win? This is actually the end of the game. You just lose and the credits roll because you can't actually beat Seth. It's impossible. It's an impossibility. Opening corrosion, not my favorite. That's all right. Argue, Defess, D band. Beautiful. So let's try mate, Defess, Pow Shield. No Grand Cross this time. Oh yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. Anything that's not corrosion, for the most part, there are definitely still ways you control me without corrosion, but for the most part, anything not corrosion is, is my stuff. That's my stuff. Never mind where everyone is targeting all of their attacks, which honestly is just Really freaking smart, if you ask me. It's all very clear where they're targeting their attacks against the person like said. And I don't blame them. Is it messed up? It kind of is, but at the same time, can you blame them? I don't think you can blame them. Thankfully, I have just a macro. It's that one. Look at that, y'all. Macros that get made that are used all the time for every situation. Isn't that just wonderful? It's almost as if this game is, has been thought through by people. Definitely not me, but by other people. Ooh, baby. Yeah, buddy. A is for agility. Oh dear. Okay, well, 
at least they woke up. Uh, many buffs persist. Even through death. But, uh... One buff that does not persist through anything is speed. So if you get put to sleep, gotta re up, gotta re her. They die, gotta re her. Shoot, you use anti on someone? You have to re her them. <laughs> everything, everything takes agility away. Okay. All right, so we know, we know wh whatever the heck Rykros is. We know it's in space, so let us head to the handy dandy spaceship. I just want to appreciate Seth uh, for not murdering my party, and instead, even though it looked like a death animation, he instead just let me go. It was like he threw a smoke bomb, like a death animation smoke bomb. It was like, these guys are alright, I'm out. Thank you, Seth, for not murdering me. So yeah, as it turns out, Rykros is a planet. And now we're gonna talk to um, a cosmic being, no joke, named LaRouf. And uh, he's gonna drop a lot of the final lore on us about profound darkness and how basically there's always been a balance and battle between the great light and the profound darkness. And how the great light sealed the profound darkness, but every 1,000 years the seal weakens, um, and that's why strange things start to happen, and that's why the events of Fantasy Star 1 and Fantasy Star 2 happen, and that's why they're 1,000 years apart, because that's when the seal weakens and the profound darkness can have its agents do things. Um, one of the other things that happened in Fantasy Star 2, as you may recall if you've played it, is that one of the planets got destroyed, and the planets themselves are the seal. So having a missing component of the seal means um, stuff's just going crazy this time around. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh, settle the score once and for all. Uh, okay. Nice, nice menu. <laughs> Uh, but before LaRouf will help you, in classic RPG fashion, you have to get tested first. So we have to go to the Strength Tower and the Courage Tower, traverse the towers, grab some items, fight some bosses, and then... And then we'll be all set to fight the Profound Darkness. Uh, maybe not Rune, since he was just heavily murdered, but everyone else will be prepared. <laughs> Yikes, dude. That, that was rude. I do say so myself. He's, like, he's died twice now, right? So, he's a little behind on experience, but what are you gonna do? I'm sure it won't be a problem. Alrighty, so Garrock, no. Wood cane, There we go. Uh, nope. I knew I I knew I went too far. Uh, let's see here. I don't know that I've had a single menu go well today. But it'd be like that sometimes. So we picked up an item, the Guard Rod there. It's yet another item that has uh, in-battle usage, and it actually does an AoE, a moderate AoE heal, and it's free. Uh, so a, an incredible, incredible item. And we just built a bunch of macros around it as well for this planet that I'm on. Hey, so we've gotten, what, one encounter where Rune died? <laughs> cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Hmm. 
Uh, yeah, looking good. So this is what, Devars? He's kind of like the physical guy. All right, who's trolling? Is anybody trolling today? Oh, we good, we good, let's go. Uh, no. You know what? Let's 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 stay on script. All right. Um, let's get off script. See if, let's get off script and then see if I pay for it. Uh, so the main mechanic here is uh, he can punch one person for a lot or he can punch everyone for uh, a moderate amount. And uh, if you hit him with an ability, he's scripted to then, so like a flare, for example, he's scripted to do his AoE. Um, yeah, that's enough HP. That worked out. So clearly he, oh my god, clearly he does a lot of damage, but we're pretty equipped to handle it. That was kind of scary, but ultimately irrelevant because he didn't outturn my healer, so it's fine. So we basically get to use this free AoE heal to keep all my humanoids up, and then eventually Red will have taken enough damage that I have to heal everyone. And by then, everyone, because I'm not healing as much as I'm taking, so somewhere down the line you have to heal your humanoids anyway. That worked out pretty nice. A little too much bungling in the menu, of course, but easy peasy otherwise. And then uh, we'll get three out of five rings. There's like a story element to them, but they're also pretty great um, defensive elements as well. And so that's one out of two towers down. And uh, we'll heal up and then hit the next one. Which is uh, where the boss is more magic based. Look how fast this Hydrofoil is. Driving it, is a, driving it well is an accomplishment. Goodbye, PlayStation controllers. So they got a little thing going on where um, if they haven't taken their turn yet and you hit them with an ability like a, uh, like a skill, they'll air slash you. I was thinking about picking up an extra treasure, but we've gotten a lot of encounters in this tower. We only got one in the last one, but this tower has been pretty populated, so I think I'll forgo that. Let fog in. We'll be leaving now. Thank you. talking about first game we ever played, Smurfs on the ColecoVision. 
What a game it is. Alright, we didn't die. Alrighty. Pretty sure. Alright. Pretty much the only thing that needs to happen here is Ren getting his barrier off. Everything else is kind of whatever. Of course it didn't happen, but Marathon safe levels, y'all. Marathon safe. HP. That was, that was a little awkward, but that's all right. Yeah, he would have lived. That's all right. We're, we don't have to play ultra aggressive. We're just having fun. Aren't we having fun? For this boss? Um, the only script he has is if you use, uh, I believe, a regular attack on him, he's scripted to use Legion on you, which melts your face off. Otherwise, you can use Hewn, Flaley, or Tandle. Or, uh, Tandle? Tandle? Something like that. Okay, we'll get our fourth and fifth rings here. Looks like we've passed the tests, y'all. Okay, we're putting the side crown back on, and uh, putting that on, and putting that on. We're getting out of here. It's time we get the last lore dumps here. So let's talk about maybe like a final setup. Um, Ren is Ren. He's had the same armor he's had since the weapons factory and the same gun since the climate center and that's how he rolls. Um, he's just a beefy enough android even in the speed run to survive basically anything. Um, and when you want to do damage to like a boss or something you're going to use flare anyway so the gun he's using is kind of irrelevant. Older routes used to go into Valhalla Fortress to get him epic gear, and that gun in there is really good, but no need. So he's good. We will be using Kira as our final fifth member. Um, with the Marathon safe route, you can um, use Grizz or Raja effectively. Uh, Raja's very nice because he can continually refill your TP, and Rika can become a, just a really badass healer. Um, and so it's very easy to remain stable. The only way Raja can have enough HP to survive the last boss regularly, of course, is through the extra levels you get. So he can't be used in a normal speedrun. Um, 
The reason why Grizz is nice is even though he's slow as heck and doesn't really do a lot of damage um, at speedrun levels, even at marathon safe speedrun levels, um, he's not damaging, but at marathon safe levels, uh, he's incredibly tanky. So he's nice to have. We won't be doing any of that um, because I'd rather save things like that for charity events. Um, but if you're interested in seeing uh, Grizz being run, um, you could watch the um, limit, the RPG Limit Break 2019 race between Tyler and I. Um, you can see him in action because Grizz won the Bid War. So instead, we will use Kira, whose um, utility in the normal speed run is unmatched. She's the only one tanky enough on the regular. Uh, she's also pretty fast. Um, she has damage and healing, and she has uh, Warla, which is a nice buff to have. So she's just really good across the board. Uh, and uh, now she'll be even slightly stronger than usual because of the extra grinding. Uh, Rune has the same setup as before as well. Two. Oh. Interesting. I didn't realize I had that on still. Um, anyway. What was I saying? He has two side shields. Uh, Ren, Chaz, and Rune will be wearing the rings as well. Very highly defensive items. Um... Maroon's got his same setup, Reflect Road, two side shields, got that mental stat pumped up as best as we can. Um, and Kira and Rune will be our main healers. Um, Rika will be doing damage, that's why she has two claws. You could put a ring on her and it would be more defensive. Uh, but it's a trade-off because uh, the Psy Crown, even though it's less defensive and very old, is still the only real mental stat pumping thing that you have for her so in order to like even though you put her at risk of dying a little bit more especially on pv attempts um the trade-off is more mental more agility more likely to outturn the boss which you really need to have happen in, at least in very specific circumstances and then chaz here ring armor and we're in this cave to get his final weapon, the uh, Elsilian. Elsidian? There you go. Uh, there'll be a whole cutscene that is one of several to really tie together Fantasy Stars 1, 2, and 4. You can see characters from Fantasy Star 1 right here and their battle against Dark Force. You have characters from Fantasy Star 2 and their battle against Dark Force seeing how everything kind of links together so it's pretty cool um and yeah once this is over we'll be heading to the final dungeon the final dungeon can be a, a trip both visually and speed wise and then there's a final boss the final boss is three phases first two phases are pretty standard and the last phase is kind of insane and even with the quote-unquote marathon safety built in i can this is the other point in time where i can just straight die um, and there can be literally nothing I can do about it. Um, and if that happens, then you lose like 12 minutes. So it's... And it's just one of those things because the amount of levels it would take to completely, completely negate any possibility of dying would probably take me longer than dying and redoing it over again. There's just only so much you can do. Now, when you play this casually, you don't really even have to grind too much. Um, you always can if you're finding things to be too hard, but you don't have to do a ton. You're going to be a pretty dang good level by the time you get here, and you're probably going to be fine. And you'll take anybody you want. Um, 
But when it comes to speed runs, you gotta be a bit more strategic, and even then, you could do everything right and still die. I'm obviously hoping that's not gonna happen, but, um... It is what it is, if it does. Okay, so we'll be taking Kira. Again, she's tanky, she has heals, she has damage, she's fairly quick. There's just no reason not to bring her. Um... Oops. Okay, so uh, say goodbye to the bitrate. This is the final dungeon. I'll let this dungeon speak for itself. Okay. We're almost done, though. Ooh, I don't- oh, man. I was almost a sad, sad boy. Although, I guess, technically, I'm still kind of sad that no one hit their instant death. Not a single person. Huh. <laughs> it looks fine, casually. I mean, as long as you can just handle the general design, like, it's still... Obviously, it's still just a weird-looking dungeon, but, like, it, it, it definitely isn't, like, bothering me. I'm actually really impressed at how none of these skills aren't working. <laughs> nice Bindwa. I don't even know who learns that. This is, like, a new, new threshold of level. <laughs> All right, all right. Final prep, final prep. That must have been Kira's. Um, okay. I really don't need to make Rever macros, so let's... Let's do some new macros on the fly, shall we? New macros on the fly, let's go. What do I want to do with this one, eh? Alright, we'll, 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 we'll do this. F it. Um, sure. 
How about that? Let's just make up macros that we've literally never made before right now. Uh, as far as timing goes, um, this fight will take somewhere around 8 to 10 minutes, and then it'll be time. Assuming I don't die. So, just as a, just as a heads up. Nice turn order. LOL! <laughs> Thank you, Ren. Thank you so much, dude. Oh, dear lord, dear. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, dude. This is awkward, to say the least, but all right, we'll move on. Still need a barrier for rune. Insane and not in a good way. <laughs> Thankfully, phase one is really easy to stabilize against, so it's really not a huge deal. after next turn. And he, all he does are single target attacks. Now, as you can see, they might be really freaking strong, but... Uh... But yeah, easy to stabilize against. Alright, so we'll move on to phase two. This one will use way more AoE attacks, so it's... it's uh bit more of a pain in the butt because um, more AoE attacks means you're, more people are healing and less people are dealing damage, which means the fight takes longer, which means you're dump dumping into resource or you're having to use resources, and so you can use a single target and you're definitely hoping that it happens. Um, oh, yeah, I still have to do this. Okay. Um, Well, you're definitely hoping you're, he uses it on someone tanky. <laughs> so that's where we want to use this one. Well, that's... that's very nice. Oh, baby, let's frickin' go. Um. Jess! You! Mm. Jess! Phase 3, 13,000 hit points, one of the best songs in the game, and a stack soundtrack. And I can wipe at any time. Nice turn order, by the way. Basically, the, the, the risk here is she has a spell called Canceling, which takes away all of my buffs, including Barrier, and Speed, of course. 
So the big thing is that. Oh my! <laughs> Hold on, I gotta pause, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Marathon non punish. <laughs> I can't. It's always gotta be something, dude. I can't have a normal marathon run to save my life, dude. <laughs> it can't happen. It cannot happen. It, it, it legitimately cannot happen, dude. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this was almost a good run, man. And then I did that, dude. She cancels you and you lose your buffs. She could then magic you before you get to go and then you die. But who needs a cancel magic when you can just accidentally run and then die anyway? All right, so here's here's the true test. Woo! Oh my god, dude. <laughs> My heart is fucking- oh, I'm sorry. My heart is pounding, dude. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Don't big please me, dude. That one was very tame. Please, please. Alright, uh... We gotta use the arouse spell to wake her up. Oh, baby! Let's go, dude. I don't know how close she is, but time will be like soonish. She's generally close, I just couldn't tell you like, oh, it's definitely this round or whatever. Nice, she put to sleep the person who can wake people up, so that's, that's fine. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. More Warlows, right? Uh... You're dead, but it is what it is.
Y'all. Y'all. Can we... Can we talk about how... It was a clean run? And then I got hit by Medjid? And then I tried to run away from the frickin' boss? And then she slept Rin? Can we... Can we talk about this? Can we talk about how I was talking about for over three hours about how the game can just own you and the only person who owned me was me? <laughs> I can't with myself, dude. <laughs> oh my god. I cannot. I can't have a normal marathon run, dude. I can't. I just can't. It just cannot happen. It's actually impossible. High spirits, I tried. I still did it. cut so thank you for watching everybody thank you for enjoying fantasy star 4 with me big fawn balls it's a wonderful game it's a great speed run i'm certainly not the only one who speed runs the game but i feel like my name is very much attached to this game it's my baby As per usual, people plug the same stuff, so there is a Fantasy Star speedrun Discord with pretty much all the games, um, including this one. There's a pretty beginner-friendly route, as beginner-friendly as this run can be, um, all documented and noted. Um, it will not be anywhere close to what I did today or what I will do for PB attempts, but um, you can definitely get under the three-hour time with it. Um, that's all that really matters. Um, And yeah, it's just a wild ride speedrunning it every time, even when it's marathon safe. I actually died on Profound Darkness 3 yesterday. Um, so I was ready to do that again. And then I was not ready to wipe because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but uh, I've never not, if it's, if, it's an, if it's a marathon run where I'm by myself, it's always been disastrous somewhere. I always blow up somewhere. It might not even be related to the run itself, um, but it always happens. Now, usually when I have live runs, I, I have cal other commentators and I'm usually completely focused on the game. So these kinds of things tend not to happen. But uh, these online marathons, oh boy, are they, are they ever memorable? And today is no exception. So, I appreciate everyone bearing witness to my stupidity, but at least we somehow, some way, didn't get punished. And we were able to finish the game. I haven't talked this much in a long time. My throat is dying. And so, as we sit here and watch the ending, 
Just thank you very much again for hanging out. I hope you had fun. I sure did. Even if my heart exploded at the very end, uh, I'm sure I'll recover. And um, my streams are completely motiv um, dedicated to trying to PB in this game. So I don't know when I'll stream next, but it'll be this game when I do. Well, GK, first off, the school year is over, and second off, the whole year was done online. Classes are shorter, and you can just record record videos and then not even talk after that, so... Tyler, if there's one thing I do well, it's talk. It certainly isn't speedrun. But it is talk. Is that a Furby in green robes? It's a Motavian, technically. time to kill. Well, we have good ending themes to chill with. Unfortunately, I gave my goodbye speech already. So now this is just really awkward. Oh, there's another person grinding this game pretty regularly. His name's Darko, Darko underscore RTA. He's way better than I am and way better than I can ever dream of being. Uh, so if you do want to watch speedruns of this game and you want to watch someone who's actually good, you can watch him. Uh, I believe PP, the letter P, and then the letter P, Chan, all one word, is back at the game as well. We'll follow him. He's also better than I am. Both of those guys are good and um, typically are no micing it. So if you want to see speed, you go watch them. If you want to see someone being an idiot, but still going fairly fast, you can watch me. And I think everyone else is kind of on a hiatus right now. But those are some cool people to watch if, he, um, if you want to keep watching runs of this game. Fair warning though, for me personally, um, marathon runs are it's pretty easy to be positive too. But of course, when you're doing your own PB attempts, easy to be a bit more negative, so there is that. I'm not gonna try to pretend otherwise. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, there's notes for the game if you want to learn. But dude, dude. Imagine a situation where there's like a speedrun marathon, everyone Everyone has estimates for their game so that you can kind of stick on a schedule. And then imagine you have a run and you're like totally on schedule. You're like so on schedule. Like it's, it's unbelievable how un on schedule you are. And then, and then at the very end, you accidentally run away from the boss and then somehow don't die. Can you imagine a situation like that? I don't think you can. I actually don't think that, that kind of thing could possibly happen. But it sure sounds pretty funny though, doesn't it?
Yo, enjoy the jam. All right, y'all. Before I get kicked out of here, I need everyone, if you're around, I want you to summarize your feelings for Chaz in one emo and then post it in chat. Doesn't have to be my emo. In fact, it probably shouldn't be my emo. Summarize your feelings for Chaz in one emo and then hit enter. Okay. 